But then, thank you so much for accepting my invitation for an interview. Thank you so much again for actually convincing Christian for an interview too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was too shy to ask, and I'm sure he would have said yes, but I was too shy to ask. Thanks for actually encouraging him to do that too. Um, and I'm so glad that we actually saw each other these times. Like, well, we came to this conference of yeah, the really fantastic. big number of eight people in this conference. One, two, three. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because my, my room is three squared. Yes. Ah, I see. I, I missed that. <laughs> I see. So, but you have seen the interviews before, so I have sent you a couple of copies. Uh, you, you know, the design will just ask you about good mathematics, especially as a profession, and try to get some advice from you, professional advice from you, as a more senior, uh, more senior colleague. Okay. That's, I'm gonna be ashamed to say a colleague. I mean, you're definitely a mathematician, but I'm trying to be, so. Yeah, I, I already feel myself to see you. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big <laughs> thing. So, maybe, yeah, let's start the 50 minutes and later. let's end the conversation. Um, so, we were just talking about the new paper that you put on archive at Carson Schneider. That, that is not even the last paper that you put. So, uh, maybe I should ask you, this first. So, how many projects is too many projects? Because you seem to be working on many things on parallel. Yeah, but I mean, they, not all are supposed to be successful, right? And like the, the talk I gave you yesterday was about uh, something that is in development for many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, because it's so beautiful, I, I really hope it to find out to be final, finalized at some point. But uh, there is no guarantee. And um, yeah, so these days probably too many would be over five okay. simultaneously. So it means that in, in one day I could only handle communication about five or six. Yeah. Wow. But it, it's, it's still a little bit fake because to me all, all these things, even they look differently, are related. And uh, I kind of see these interactions. If I don't, I try to just to get into things. Yeah. Because we are having some communication over the project that we try to solve. Yes. And I know the frequency of the emails that we can send. So if you can handle five of those, that is much faster than me it is at a professional level. Yeah, but maybe that's not the something I would recommend to some <laughs> <laughs> just to react quickly. Uh, because first of all first comments can be really silly mm -hmm. and uh, the second thing is that sometimes it's really important to read to just to fall completely and then only to react and that's not only about the semantics uh, and because that's also come in real life problems and so when someone writes I try not to postpone because if I postpone it's it may be just forget it Watson or just left an answer for for years uh, before I realized that. But it's it's only about self-organization, which I admire is not ideal. But so somehow it comes to this and uh, yeah, I kind of I'm naturally this way and I'm not sure that everyone is just doing uh, cope with uh, emails and Things like that in the same way. Yeah. But well, in the emails and in person, like I see that you're actually getting really excited about mathematics. Like you, so, do you, can you keep her excited for a long time? Because there's a common question that I ask that how do you stay motivated for like, a final project? Yeah, but that's probably uh, this kind of overexcitement you, you observe. Uh, that's uh, the downside is that they don't last. And, and well, exactly because I mean, there, there is some other project and there could be some other or disappointment, okay. which would also kill the, the excitement of, of that. And uh, yeah, it's like uh, jumping up and down uh, at a pace which is kind of still possible. I think I'm kind of happy to be 
sometimes do emotional among the scenes because uh, that's what we live uh, for. Uh, like to, to see some, some beauties that really uh, motivate us and, and uh, make us happy. Or to, to have some sorrows that is kind of hard to, to go through, but I mean, this still keeps us very emotional about these things. Uh, I, I think I will do somehow come to Alexander Park's question that, that he was saying that you start to see things appear, you start to see patterns, and then you get excited. And you can almost, like, when you're finding, when you're solving something. You well, that can take very long. Right? <laughs> So then you, you should have some kind of plan B for just getting excited for and something that's else. Only four projects. That yes, that's I mean uh, that's possibly I mean uh, kind of a real reason to be trying to, to do several things at once. But at least there is a guarantee that one of, of those would would bring you in a good mood. Yeah. yeah. But that's true, yeah. So we, we really look for for something that Really, really small in a big appeal of, and uh, we are happy when we get uh, yeah, that's true. That's that's actually, understanding that, yeah. that actually leads me to the next natural question. I keep on asking uh, get different aspects. So when is a project over? So when do you decide to make something into a paper or when do you decide to abandon it for a while? Oh that's uh, there is no general answer. In many cases, it's really when the excitement is gone. But, I mean, so things are done, they have to be recorded, and yeah, that's the end of the story. And then I just try to find some enthusiastic moments where I would take part into writing. Sometimes I just do the whole writing, yeah, because in some, with some courses, I, I understand that I, I will be a, a, a better person to, to lead. With some, I just do my part. I see. Yeah. Well, then, well, with that, I, I can really ask you what makes a good collaborator. Because sometimes it is to take a lead or something like this to assist, but what makes a good collaborator for you? Well, it's. Uh, Again, no general risk, I understand that for sure. No, but I mean, so. The whole point I, I, I really understood through my experience is that uh, I mean, collaborating is to complement your skills. And so if, if you have someone who has more or less essentially the same skills and, and uh, because kind of you're doing the same things, you can, oh, it's, it's a good thing to collaborate and to create something really, really great. So it doesn't work for some reason because if you are capable to do the same things, then you just do it, and so you don't need that other guy. Right. And uh, so, but for the majority of collaborations, yeah, so I, I really enjoy doing that with my colleagues who are doing completely different uh, kind of areas in mathematics, and uh, that also uh, gives me a good chance to learn so what, what is going around, to, to see the connections. And uh, well, also to to teach my colleagues uh, about what I can do. And uh, yes, yeah, so after all, every collaborative project is supposed to be enjoyable by all sides, because otherwise it doesn't make any sense to, to run it. And uh, it's it's always helpful to know that there is at least one more person who cares about what you do and so who enjoys the. You do. Um, otherwise, yeah, so you, you can prove something and learn that it's okay, so that's only interesting to yourself. So, that's which is not, not the best outcome, I would say, in my But that's the destiny of some paper, I guess. Yeah, well, but. Not I, I, yeah, but I mean, I don't want this destiny for my papers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I can just jump to. Uh, some of your CV because you traveled a lot. Like you were in Russia, then you you were in Moscow State, then you were in Scotland, then you went to Germany, then you went to Australia, then you're in the Netherlands now. Okay. Yeah. 
is that a necessity in mathematics? Like, well, what do you think is moving from place to place a necessity? I mean, it definitely would help to see different types of mathematics, different types of people. Uh, yeah, that's true, but I mean, I think there is a little bit more in travel. It's, it's not only about seeing uh, the other people and, and to enjoy, I mean, enjoying the, the concept of scalabilities, but also to seeing other countries, mm. other cultures, and uh, well, also back sides of, of this, of course, unknown. Um, but it, it's something, okay, I mean, the truth is that I first came abroad out of the, say, Soviet Union uh, when I was almost 30 years old. So before that, okay, so I managed to travel within the Soviet Union and it was nice, but I, I, I had no idea what the world is outside. And I would never imagine that I would travel to Australia. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I kind of just doing the same things that I, I have a very good feeling about. And uh, uh, maybe it's a little bit eccentric really to move from one place to another, but it's, uh, it's the, just the drawback of the profession. Because in mathematics, uh, we are like soccer players, yeah? so we are just going to the club uh, that's highest, not the one we'd like to be. And uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of uh, the big uh, drawback, but still I, I think I'm, I'm really happy to be back uh, to Europe after all. But I would never kind of neglect uh, a lot of positive things from my Australian experience. No, yeah, of course, of course not. And so it was also an interesting time in my life. I think you put it perfect that like you're almost like soccer players. Yeah, it's just that the transfer season happens and people shift. That's exactly what it is. I find myself in Florida and I'm like, oh, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, we have longer lives. What do you like as as Malpaid, the some soccer players? Okay, so but if we are paid with an academia, so most um, satisfied. I mean, to, to have a permanent job and to, to secure kind of your level of life, so it's it's, yeah. it's a good thing as well. It's a good thing about the profession. Yeah. Well, I cannot say really yet. Well, but it's advice to secure yeah, so your life within academia. Well, it's really a challenge, but uh, yeah, that's what we should think about all, all the time. Yeah. So, what is. Maybe I, I can just switch this question to this way uh, in my mind. Um, what should be expected from a postdoc? So, what should a postdoc. What, uh, what defines a successful postdoc for you? That can later turn into tenure track and tenure professor at some point. Oh, I should have told you not to ask about <laughs> that. <laughs> but no, it's okay. Well, because I, I feel that I mean, uh, so postdocs. Uh, so if if you look in the past, uh, it it was a kind of very minor part of, of academic jobs. Now the postdoc is the, the major academic job. So most of the people are doing postdocs. Yeah. And uh, this kind of, it, it really creates a very insecure kind of uh, group within academia, which is huge. And uh, that they, they have to really think all the time about uh, surviving, uh, which is uh, a, a bit of a challenge. And so it's very hard to complement it with a really wonderful and, and uh, great research. So I, I, I'm really kind of against the institute of, of postdoctoral fellowships because most of the time, so they just kind of give a chance to someone to, to really uh, to, to be successful, but in many cases it comes out into a disappointment and people just leave academia for, uh, yeah, so for kind of outside jobs, which is a completely different story. I'm really sad about that. Yes, I, I think that we should kind of reduce these kind of things, but mm. think about something um, more permanent for, for the people at an early stage. So to, to give them guarantees that, well, okay, so if, if 
for some reason they, they have to be fried, so they could be just, yeah, but it shouldn't be like 20% remain and 80% go out. So that's, uh, yeah, that's not something natural. Uh, do you have a complete threat to trap security of cost? I guess the hard question nowadays. I guess it is not there. But, but I, I was a postdoc. Uh, Roughly when I already have this, when I already secured my job in Moscow. Did so only after that, I, I just became a postdoc. At Max Planck? No, in, in Paris, on uh, the Rostovsky Fellowship. And, and then I was a Humboldt Fellow as well, but uh, that, I already had a secure job. So, I mean, so those uh, periods of almost one year each they were very productive and successful because I didn't need to think about. I mean, finding a job. That was great. Uh, I wish I could see that, or I wish I can see that at some point. <laughs> yeah, I wish as well. Yeah. Um, but uh, what defines a size of the is not clear. So. Ooh. Yeah. It's that's a thing. <laughs> it goes by very fast. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. But if, if you. I have just one small question. No. <laughs> if you would like me to ask it, I will definitely ask it. Yes, but, uh, so, why did you choose to write these two? Because we just decided to carry this board here that you directly went for pi and q along with pi. Or at least one q and Well, we, we should have something mathematical on the back, right? So, and, uh, I mean, I, okay, so I, I have personal witness to the number pi, but um, through the years, because of my interest in the Q stuff, I was also kind of very well excited about the analogy. And uh, I, I mean, I was proving some irrational results from those things. And uh, it, obviously, this kind of stuff is very natural, fitting what I'm kind of doing still. Yeah, that's probably explain the, the picture of, uh, <laughs> on, on the background. Yeah, I, I thought your modesty that you said you have interest about pi, but I, I mean, for irrational to measure, I guess you have the record for pi, so, right? And pi squared and pi, pi four, maybe? Yes, uh, well, pi with Doran, for pi to the four with Raphael, and uh, yeah, for pi q with uh, Peter Nusho. Uh, yes, so there, there is also a record. <laughs> so, <laughs> you have much so more than interest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a very special constant, uh, and, uh, well, in this minute, but also to me personally. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Thank you yeah. for having this interview. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so glad that we, we met in 2016 at this conference, right? Yes. Yeah. yes.